This video is based on a presentation I gave at the Zoomer Life Conference in Toronto on October 27, 2011. Rapid Aging Syndrome. What is it? What causes it? What can we do about it? You would think that the information I'm presenting is top secret. It is not taught in schools. It is not discussed by Health Canada. Most doctors are unaware of it, and it is not part of the evening news. I'm not referring to rapid aging on the outside. I'm referring to rapid aging on the inside. Symptoms include poor sleep, confusion, chronic fatigue, chronic pain, anxiety, depression, and a host of other symptoms that we treat with pharmaceuticals. In 2001, a study conducted in Spain examined symptoms experienced by people living at various distances from cell phone towers. Now you might ask, who lives this close to cell antennas? The answer is quite a few people. This is an apartment building in Toronto showing two antennas on the roof. The man standing on the balcony is very close to both antennas. These antennas are constantly transmitting microwave radiation. The top floor of apartment buildings often have the highest exposure. According to the Spanish study, people who live within 300 meters of cell towers have an increase in these symptoms. Collectively, these symptoms are called electrohypersensitivity. The symptoms in red are the ones we experience as we age, so I prefer to call this rapid aging syndrome. Indeed, many people who are electrohypersensitive attribute their symptoms to aging or living a stressful lifestyle and have become accustomed to chronic ill health. The source of the electrosmog in the example I provided comes from antennas, but we use devices on a daily basis that also expose us to this radiation, including smart meters. If we could hear this radiation, this is what it would sound like. <coughs> notice anything unusual in this picture? The plants near the smart meter are not nearly as healthy as those further away. Electrosmog has also been associated with degenerative diseases like diabetes, various neurological disorders, heart problems causing an irregular or rapid heart rate, blood disorders, it's been shown to affect sperm, and it has been associated with various types of cancers. Degeneration starts at our cells, and here is an example. I took a blood sample, placed it on a slide, and placed the slide under the microscope. This is what my blood looked like in my home, which is electromagnetically clean. After I used a computer for 70 minutes, and after I talked on a cordless phone for 10 minutes. The blood cells are sticking together and resemble a stack of coins. This is called rouleau formation and indicates unhealthy blood. It reminds us that aging starts at our cells. Here is another example of how electromagnetic energy can affect blood cells. This time I laid on a mat that emits pulsed magnetic fields. After an 8 minute treatment, instead of my blood clumping, most of the cells are free and are not sticking together. This enables maximum surface area for gas exchange. It turns out not all electromagnetic fields are the same. Healing also starts at our cells. I first began to study the harmful effects of electrosmog. Recently, I became interested in the beneficial or electrotherapeutic effects of electromagnetic energy. This is the yin-yang of electromagnetic exposure. I teamed up with Bob Conley, and together we traveled to various places in Europe and North America and interviewed scientists, doctors, engineers working with pulsed electromagnetic fields for a documentary we are producing. Here is a peek at some of the information we have gathered so far. Pulsed electromagnetic fields, PEMF for short, have been used since the 1970s to heal fractured bones. Today, we can buy portable PEMF devices that we attach to our body to accelerate healing and relieve pain. Veterinarians use these devices as well. 
Healing bone fractures was one of the first uses of pulse magnetic therapy recognized by health agencies in North America. At CAMH, the Center for Addiction and Mental Health at the University of Toronto, doctors are testing the effectiveness of pulsed cranial magnetic therapy on obsessive compulsive disorder, schizophrenia, depression, and anxiety. The pulsed magnetic field is applied to the head and has been approved by Health Canada as a Class III medical device. In Quebec, we met Dr. Roland Drolet, who invented the room art, a device that was originally designed to help those with rheumatism and arthritis. Dr. Drolet uses pads for localized treatment and two large metal rings for treating the entire body. This device received a Canadian patent in 1983. It uses frequencies common on Earth, the Tesla Schumann resonance, which is like the heartbeat of the Earth, and a waveform that resembles the action potential of nerve cells. We took the room art for testing to the Bioenergy Med Metabolic Institute in Pennsylvania, where Dr. Jeff Marangel uses electro-interstitial scan to measure the bioimpedance and to assess imbalances in the body. Here is one of his patients. Two electrodes are attached to his forehead, and he has his hands and feet on metal plates. A weak current is passed through the body, which indicates imbalances in the fluid bathing the cells. The day we were there, this patient came in complaining of chronic back pain, and the scan showed that indeed there was inflammation, shown in red, in various nerves along his spinal cord. The patient received a 10-minute room art treatment and stated that he felt an 80% reduction in back pain. An immediate follow-up scan showed that the inflammation, areas in red, had disappeared. Two weeks later, the pain had not returned. We also went to Europe. Switzerland is the location for the World Health Organization, and they have access to highly advanced healthcare technology. In Switzerland, we met Dr. Thomas Rao, who runs the Paracelsus Clinic, a world-famous clinic known for treating difficult cases. Dentistry is an important part of this clinic. Instead of using pharmaceuticals to reduce pain, Dr. Rao uses pulsed electromagnetic fields. After dental surgery, the patient places his head in the middle of a round cylinder that pulses electromagnetic energy and eliminates pain. The cylinder can be used on other body parts as well. In Lugano, Switzerland, we visited the factory that assembles the IMRS pulsed magnetic controllers. These devices are commonly used in healing centers across the country, where patients come in several times a week for treatment. We then went to Liechtenstein and visited the chief executive officer of Beamer. They produce mats that emit pulse magnetic fields. While we were there, we were introduced to the work of Dr. Rainier Klopp at the Institute for Microcirculation. Dr. Klopp is able to document live blood cells moving through blood vessels in the body using real-time videography as shown here. The blood in some vessels is not flowing smoothly. It looks like a traffic jam. This is what the microcirculation looked like after a Beamer treatment. The blood is now flowing smoothly. You can see it again here, before treatment on the right and after treatment on the left. A treatment that improves circulation is going to benefit the entire body. The beamer also affects the behavior of white blood cells. White blood cells are an important component of the immune system. After treatment, the white blood cells can be seen crawling along the inside wall of the vessel, which enables them to better detect receptor sites that indicate infection. Here is rare footage in slow motion showing one white blood cell migrating into the surrounding tissue. What does this mean? We have evidence that exposure to therapeutic pulsed electromagnetic fields reduces blood viscosity, improves blood circulation, benefits the immune system, promotes healing of bone fractures, 
fights depression, and reduces pain. Pulsed electromagnetic fields are used to help people with many different conditions. However, PEMF devices do not treat a specific condition. Instead, they optimize the body's natural self-healing and self-regulating functions. Why is this not common knowledge in North America? While we can benefit from good frequencies, we need to reduce our exposure to bad frequencies if we want to maintain or regain our health. Here are some recommendations. Keep devices that emit radio frequency radiation away from your body. Both the BlackBerry and iPhone user manuals give similar warnings to keep the device away from the body and to reduce the amount of time spent on calls. In October 2011, Health Canada issued a warning that we should limit our use of cell phones, particularly those under the age of 18. This comes five months after the World Health Organization reclassified radio frequency electromagnetic fields as a possible human carcinogen, and 11 years after a similar warning in the United Kingdom. Use wired devices rather than wireless devices. Create a sanctuary in your home. This canopy contains silver fiber that reflects the radiation and is particularly useful if you live near cell phone antennas. Other products have similar effects. Filters plugged into electrical outlets can reduce your exposure to dirty electricity. You can use silver to protect your body when you are away from home, not in the form of jewelry, but in the form of silver fiber, which is placed in underwear and in the lining of coats and jackets. Very sensitive individuals may need to have their entire body covered in some environments. A silver-lined burqa would be ideal. The only thing missing are glasses to protect eyes, which are very sensitive to microwave radiation. The information I present in this video is both disturbing and encouraging. It is particularly disturbing when you consider that about 30% of the population is likely to have mild to moderate electro-hypersensitivity. About 3% of the population is chronically ill with severe symptoms, and some of these people have become electromagnetic refugees in their own homes. It is also disturbing because levels of electrosmog are going to increase before we have appropriate regulation to control it. Of particular concern are the powerful 4G and Tetra antennas. It is encouraging because we are beginning to better understand how the body heals, and certain therapies are promoting healing rather than masking symptoms. It is encouraging that Health Canada and the World Health Organization are limping in the right direction. And it is encouraging that the media is beginning to bring this information to the public's attention. We all have an important role to play if we want to ensure good health for ourselves and for future generations. We need to remove Wi-Fi from schools. We need safer guidelines that recognize non-thermal effects. We need to educate doctors and other healthcare professionals about electrosmog, electrohypersensitivity, and electrotherapeutics. We need to prevent antennas erected near residential areas, hospitals, and schools. And we need to use wired meters rather than the wireless smart meter that is proposed by governments. The media has a critical role to play to raise public awareness. Within the next five to ten years, the information I present in this video will be self-evident. Indeed, some believe it already is.